Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of uh, Stellaris. I almost said it again. <laughs> Let's play some more Stellaris in our Roma Galactica series. If you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch like two episodes back. So uh, anyway, we are very, very rapidly building up our fleets as well as the um, possibility of just new habitats in the area. One thing I want to do, and I mentioned this at the end of the last episode, as soon as I hit 100 influence here, I'm going to look around and see which of the uncolonized worlds in the area actually could support a bunch of new habitats and whichever one can support the most okay let's pause and do this i am going to pause for this um so let's see you're in bernard's star i don't need to actually select you but so banthelgaum for instance okay it's not banthelgaum that's only two um avior could potentially we have a dyson sphere here so maybe not put well hang on how many could we have here just two all right so never mind there um, Sirius is colonized, Sol, Omni, okay, Procyon, for instance. Procyon could have one, two, three, four, five, okay, and Procyon is, you know, a fairly significant, uh, star. Oh, wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in Pawnia. All right. And in Kabij, well, actually, Kabij, I think we already have. No, it's, it's not inhabited. Not inhabited. Pobma. All right, so Pawnee is our winner so far. Nothing there. Lando. Lando could do five. Um, the Baham system could do one. Looks like we've already got some there. Jula system could do that many. Jillis could do two more. Mirzam could do two. Okay, good. I can just select and, and it'll show me. All right, so it seems like Pawnee is going to be our winner unless there's a system up in the galactic north here that blows us away. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so Pawnee is still the winner there. Tiblik, nope. Siptim. Siplim, Siptim. No, that's just that one. And then Monward. All right, so six there. So it's Pawnee, I think. Pawnee is what we need to uh, colonize. Because, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, wait. Oh, that's even more. Wait a minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Holy crap. In addition to Tavkaleba, which we could probably build a habitat around there once we had control of it. So, yeah, this is going to be the, world, the one where we build the next string of... Um, tell you what. Let's go ahead and bring... Barnard Star, I think, doesn't have any more that it can build. Yeah, Barnard Star is done. So the one in, in Barnard Star, you're going to go over to Pawnee, and you're going to build our habitat here around New Baldurak. <laughs> around New Baldurak of all places. Let's go ahead and do that. And then this construction, so that's going to be our new core colony, which is part of the reason I've been focusing on that. And then we don't have any more influence, so we need to wait for 100 more before we can continue. So let's go ahead and convert our minerals, our energy credits rather, to minerals. All right, there's that. And there's that. Still doing upgrades on some of these. I mean, they're not being worked yet. We're waiting for the population to grow into place. I've talked about this a lot over the past uh, 25, 30 minutes of content. But I want to go ahead and get these upgraded to where I don't have to touch them anymore. That would be ideal to me. That way these, these ring worlds can just come into shape, can come into being, and I don't have to worry about them. All right, so we have room for, again, we have room for an additional core system. Sashram 1 habitat is now complete and ready for colonization. Excellent. So fairly soon we're going to start colonizing all these new ring worlds, and they will all be worlds that we can actually build up in our core territory. Every last one of them. It's going to be pretty crazy. Not ring worlds, but uh, habitats. All right. Also, I didn't we lose a sector governor? Hang on. Energy credits plus five percent. That's a good win. We could go for that again if we wanted, or we can get uh, cheaper building costs. We can go for shield hit points. Uh, yeah, let's go for cheaper building cost. Ninety-five months away. Uh, are we matched up everywhere? We are. Alpha 7, Alpha Centauri 7 habitat's now complete. Good. Now, I was going to replace you, I think, with this guy. Alex Scott is maniacal. As soon as we have enough influence, which should be right now. Nope, not quite yet. 
Oh yeah, we have the maximum number of leaders that we have. That's the other thing. We need to finish this policy, 17 months, and then we'll be able to recruit uh, Max. And then once we, actually, once Yu Deng dies, we'll have room for another leader on top of that. Governors wise, are we okay? Yeah, we are. We have governors for all of our sectors, which is pretty nice. We have a lot of influence coming in every single turn. So we're starting to see, yeah, you can see the century arrays effects. It's definitely, oh, okay. So there's the century arrays sensor ring. We can see that far. But I think we're on the final stage of it now. Sentry aerials. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and plug it in. Construction complete. All right, so this is the final. Construction complete. Yep, trade for minerals. This is the final stage, I think. Should be final stage very excited construction complete all right we need that policy to be done because <laughs> i want that leader i want to go ahead and have my um physics research moving a little bit faster it's just going to be five percent but five percent is five percent you know let's check with the um the curators to make sure we're still getting our bonus yes we are let's check with the commerce exchanges I think we're good for now. Zerocorp, I haven't talked to you in a while. You're still good. All right. All right, so there's a new... Whatchamacallit? There's a new... Um, what am I thinking? Uh, orbital habitat being built in Pawnia, and we have more that we can build soon. All right, is there an additional one that can be built here? Yes, there is. There's a few more. Oh, wait. Is that just one more? Yeah, just one more. Good. I want to go ahead and have these filled up. I want to have them done. All right, and I think Sirius is actually done, too. I don't know that there's any more I can build here. Yep, continue the deal. Cybrix home system. Remind me where that is again. Let's track it on the map again. There it is. So that's the Cybrex home system. I guess... Yeah, I mean, we already can... Yeah, there's there's nothing really to be done. The Cybrex were there, and we'll eventually have that in our territory once we finish conquering the Tendrakians, which we're going to do. It's going to happen. Believe me, it will happen. If I have to take this series longer than 61 episodes, we'll conquer the Tendrakians. That's how serious I am. <laughs> I just want to do things in order here. One of the issues, actually, that we're facing is because we're in the end game, the game is considerably slower. We're on fastest speed, but notice how the the dates are ticking by considerably slower than they would have at fast speed. Uh, earlier in the game. And this is normal. This is the way it works, but... God, we have a really, really high cap. It's kind of insane. For minerals, that is. Alright, so I think we're done building our destroyers now, aren't we? Yes, we are. Military fleets have 50 destroyers each. Now we need corvettes. Now, the question is, we actually have several different types of corvettes. I think we have... No, just the two. The torpedo boat and the Aurelius. So that's fine. Let's let's go ahead and just have both of those as our classes. Now the Claudius, honestly, I don't think I need the enigmatic encoder anymore. Um, well, yeah, I do. Yeah, let's let's leave that there because we want them to kind of be in the back. We want these guys to be the ones that rush in and hit hard, uh, and then these guys can kind of come in the back, and we want them to be a little bit harder to hit because they are our torpedo boats, and we need them to do damage and survive longer. So uh, the first bouquet. Uh, <laughs> Okay, this is this is the the fleet that joined us as a result of the uh, of these guys joining our territory. Uh, let's very quickly check our species rights and make sure they are still set up appropriately. Set rights, caste system, decent living standards, colonization allowed. Yeah, that's all. That's all gravy. All right, that's set. Also, are we done with humans? Are there any more that need to be modified? Empire species, human illustratum. No, we're good. So all of our humans are now properly modified. We could also, I mean, we could mess with the human illustratum and we could 
Yeah, see, we could remove that so they're no longer slow breeders, and we could give them something else. Like, we could give them uh, nomadic, which humans already have. We can give them, yeah, let's, you know what? Let's do that. Let's give them nomadic. Select all. Let's modify. It's going to take a second to do that. It's going to take five months, though. We'll, we'll, we'll get it done. Let's go ahead and knock that out. Now, the first bouquet, you know what? I don't even need you guys. I really don't. Just, I'm going to disband the entire fleet. Construction complete. Just not necessary. All right, so now let's look at Corvettes. Corvette-wise, we are sitting on 13 Claudius class, and that's it. And then here we have 14 Claudius class. Now, I want to have 60 Corvettes in each fleet. So 13 in Missinensis and 14 at Classis Ravennis. Okay, we got a lot to do. All right, so we built some... First of all, we, we definitely built some Corvette yards. So let's go there first. All right, so Baltrus Continentum needs to be where... Classis Missinensis hangs out, and then does Tropicus have one as well? No, they don't. Centauri Minor doesn't. Baloar Continentum does, though. So Baloar Continentum can be where Ravennis hangs out. Oh, there's actually two Baloar Continentums now. I forgot about that, because we terraformed one. So which is the larger of the two planets, I suppose? Let's call this... Let's just, let's just do it this way. It's a little bit complicated, but there we go. Alright, so more habitats done. Alright, so they're running. Flying, rather. And once they're... Once these uh, fleets are in place, we'll be ready to continue. Let's have a quick look at how our ring worlds are doing. Pretty damn well, if I do say so myself. We're almost done adding habitats to our core systems. And of course, we can keep adding habitats. We can add them throughout the, the rest of the game. But at some point, you know, we want to save up influence and start colonizing these worlds. That's the more important thing. It only costs 30 to colonize them. So we're going to switch focus at that point. Yep, let's upgrade you. Species modified. Done. All right, so the human illustratum have been modified. Let's make sure that there's no more that survived. Nope, we gave them nomadic. So resettlement cost is a little bit cheaper now, and they migrate faster. And we got rid of their slow breeders trait. We'll be able to do more with them once we have the final ascension perk, which we are uh, closing in on, 120 months. So 10 years exactly from the, um, from the second to last diplomacy policy, and then we'll get the final slot. Let's have a quick look here at the uh, 817 days remaining on the Sentry Array. I think this is the last stage. That looks like the final Sentry Array model. And then we can build the Science Nexus as well. I think I was talking about that kind of off the cuff a few episodes back. We can still potentially do that. Empire Leader Capacity plus one. We've been waiting for that. Ah, uh, Leader Recruitment Cost, Edict Duration, Army Damage. Army Damage is tempting. Core Sector Systems is also tempting. Um... Let's do army damage. And then what we need to do, we've got more influence here. So let's go ahead and I think Sirius is done. Nope, Sirius is not done. So you build that there. Is Sasharim done? You're not going to tell me, though. No, Sasharim's, no, there's no way Sasharim's done because there's a gas giant without a, uh, without a habitat because we can build that there. And then there's, I think it will be done after that. And that's actually just a spaceport. It looks like a habitat, but it's not. All right, are you guys in orbit? Yes, you are. All right, so now let's go ahead and spend some money. Baltrus Continentum. Again, what do you guys have? You've got uh, 13 Claudius class. We want to have 60, so let's see. So 17 more Claudius class. All right, now let's make sure that's right. This is... All right, and then we need the Aurelius class Corvettes. All right, I think that's it. Yep, perfect. All right, and then we need to do the same at, was it Balawar? Yeah, Balawar Continentum Minor, I believe is the one that has the, no, it's Major actually. All 
right, so you come here, and meanwhile, I can go ahead and queue those orders up. Now, again, you have have 14 Claudius class. So we need 16. All right, 16 there, and then... Excellent. We didn't even use our mineral surplus at that point, so we are going to be ready for war before long at all. Especially when this thing is done, because then we can see all of our enemy fleet movements. And it's going to be great. The Tendrakians are just going to buckle. They're not going to last long. I think they might be a member of a federation, though, so if we declare one of the Tendrakians, we might have a multi-front war, which might make it more worthwhile to consider building an additional fleet. Oh, wait. Looks like we have had some, um, some territory join ours as a result of maybe some colonization happening in our uh, particular sectors. So let's go here to, is this the, I think this is the Caledonia sector. Yep, let's add you. Any other systems we can add? Nope, we're good. What about down here? Oh, that's actually getting pretty close. The ONAB system is almost within our, almost within our territory. The unbidden space is getting pushed back a bit as a result of all this. All right, we're fine over here. This is the, uh, what sector is this? Is this Persis? Yeah, it's Persis. 500 days from the completion of the Century Array. And let's see how fast those Corvettes are building. In case you're curious, we need to go ahead and just start closing up, closing these up, because, well, we need civilian ships open, but Oh, you know what? Also, hang on while I'm thinking about it. Let's go ahead and recruit our maniac. Yeah, extend the deal. Alex Scott, you are now in charge of physics research. Welcome to the team. And once that other leader is gone, actually come to think of it, what we can do is... We have a scientist here that we can just, literally, we can dismiss her because we don't need her anymore. So let's go ahead and get rid of her. And now we have room for an additional leader, should we need one. Now, I don't think, do I have a governor on Earth right now? I don't know that I do. Oh, no, I do. We've <laughs> we have a Gurite governor on Earth. Totally a mistake. But we do have a Gurite governor on Earth. All right, so how fast are these building? That's how fast. Yeah, these are going to be done quickly. We're down to our last 30 here already. So we've already built everything we need to. Yep, excellent. Very, very good. These fleets are going to be formidable. And notice our energy income is still awesome. Yep, spice must flow. Let's also check with the curators. Let's make sure that we continue to get our boost here. Yep, can you aid us in our research? We would like to purchase it. What about the... Um, artisan troop. Are we doing everything we can with them? Art pieces? Nope. Can't offer any more. We wish to cancel our patronage? No. We can organize a festival, but I'd rather not. I'd rather save our influence for other things. I think the festival costs influence. Now, I think you are going to be able to build a habitat in just under a month. Specifically, you should be able to build one around Sasha Room 3. So let's go ahead and fly over here. See what happens. Oh, there's a... Okay, hang on. A new Baldrack habitat is now complete and ready for colonization. All right, so let's see just where we can build one here at all. All right, so it doesn't look like in Sasharim. So Sasharim's done, which is good. So why don't you go ahead and come to Pawnia then? 
Actually, no, the one, the one that's already building in Pawnee is ready to add a second one. So why don't we go ahead and build one around this giant planet there. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and colonize that. And we will, because that's, that's our additional core system. So we'll just wait for this influence to come in, and we will have the new, new Baldorak habitat started. This will be really good for our... Just having all these habitats is going to be insane for everything. All right, Earth. Ah, there's actually a, a society research tile on this one. Yep, new Baldorak habitat. Another option we might pursue before we actually go to war is making sure we have forts alongside our borders uh, before we actually declare war. It wouldn't take long to build them. We could do it in probably half an episode, especially if we had the money for them, which we, <laughs> we do. Um, and then that way, um, it's a little bit more Roman, you know, a little bit more Hadrian-like even, you know, building fortifications along the borders, like we were talking about with the Hadrian and Trajan class ships. All right, Balawar Continentum is almost done. Baltrus Continentum is in the same spot. Century Array completed. Exactly what technology is housed in the ring that encircles the Century Array is a closely guarded secret. The results, however, are undeniable. We have now virtually perfect knowledge of all fleet movements in the galaxy. Wealth secluded, I see all. Okay, so now... Ah, so the Demosanian Citizen Compact, which is... These guys just went to war with the Hulfier Star Hunters. How they're going to fight that war, I don't know. But uh, let's take a second while the game's paused. We have this construction ship in Fuelia, and we need to see how much the Science Nexus costs. 300 influence to build the Science Nexus. So maybe we need to wait on building more habitats. I do need to go ahead and colonize Pawnia. I know that. And then we'll wait. All right, so let's colonize this. Oh, no, we already sent a colony ship on the way, didn't we? So we're fine. So yeah, let's actually, we're going to save up for the Science Nexus, and then we'll have every single, with the exception of the Ring Worlds, we're going to have every single, um, and I don't think we're going to have Ring Worlds in this game, as a matter of fact, because the final Ascension perk we want is biology-related. We could go for the Ring World Ascension perk, but then we wouldn't be able to get the, the biology one, unless we added a mod that gave us additional Ascension perks. But I want this to be a vanilla campaign, so I'm not, I'm not going to go that route. That's just kind of the way I'm feeling. It's not, it has nothing to do with YouTube or the series, it's just the way I want to play. So... Not to say I won't do mods in the future, by the way. I'm just saying. Yep, it's a deal. Let's renew that. Okay, so it looks like we're pretty much set with our core worlds. Pawnia should be colonized very soon. Yep, they're on the way. Still waiting for the population on some of our worlds to grow sufficient to use, take advantage of all these resources, but they're getting there. Okay, there's that. All right, the new Baldur Rock habitat is being built. I'm amused that we're we've got a habitat around New Baldur Rock. Tav Kaleba, are you guys being? No, you're being passively observed. So we can't indoctrinate you because we. Okay, so we can't indoctrinate natives anymore since we set that policy. Hmm, I thought we could, but I guess we can't. That makes sense. It's indoctrination. But we can still technologically enlighten them. And we were... We were definitely working on these guys for a while. So they're materialist already. So that's... I mean, we're on the way towards having the appropriate amount of influence over them. Regardless. I guess I should say the appropriate amount of similarity. With them. Oh, what do we have here? Yeah, this is... You know what? We need to keep building some stuff in this area, so let's go ahead and... Construction complete. Actually, yeah, let's queue up just mining stations and do it this way. Construction complete. Okay, and then let's do research stations and do the same thing. 
starting there, then going there, then going there, then going there, then going there in particular. And then I think we're set otherwise. Is there another construction ship out and about that can do similar work? We're not going to build a habitat, but I just want to see where I can build additional ones. So Fulia does have room for additional habitats. We're going to wait till we have 300 so we can start the science nexus. And the question is, where are we going to build the science nexus? Let's use the same construction ship that's done the previous work. Science nexus needs to be in an important system, I think. We could put it in the Balawar system where the, uh, see, the Indomatic Fortress was hanging out. That'd be kind of cool. But I, I kind of want it more protected. I want it back in our... We could build it in the core system. How about that? And our orbits. Again, we just need 300 and we'll be able to do it. So we're getting close already. All right, let's trade for minerals. I'm amazed at how high our mineral cap is. What's our mineral cap? 92,000. <laughs> we're about to hit it. There we go. There's our mineral cap. And I think, are we done? Yeah, we are. We're done with our fleets. So check it out. We have two fleets with 30, 40, 50, and 60 each. It's time to declare war. It's time to go to war with the Tendrakians. So what we need to do is go ahead and get Classus Missinensis down here to Avior. And one of our factions is going to be unhappy with us for this. But we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> it is past time to go to war. And it looks like it's just two jumps. Nice. All right, so Pawnia has the the new Baldurak habitat, has people in it. So let's go ahead and tell you what, we're just going to build everything we can. Let's do the Leisure District. Let's do the Visitor Center. And then beyond that, um, we could have these be dedicated to research. We could have them be dedicated to solar power. We could have them be dedicated to my. I don't really think we need any of it, though. I think we can just dedicate them to research. So let's do that. Had these be research mega, <laughs> mega structures to have every single habitat that I've built do the same thing. All right. Excellent. So that's one of our new core systems. Let's go ahead and speed the game back up. So this is going to be quite the war, especially if, hang on, let's have a quick look at their diplomatic relations. They're in a federation with the Dimazanians. Um, the Dimazanians are not a threat to me, though. Um, they have federation association status with, with the Roman Star Empire. So we can go ahead and end this association status. Confirm. All right, so now they only have Federation status with... So wait, what does that mean? What does that mean? Has Federation Association status with Dimazanian Citizen Combat? Hold on. Hmm. All right, I'm going to have to look into that between episodes because I don't know if that means that declaring war will mean that I go to war with both of them at once. It's not a problem if I do. Uh, I think I can hit them regardless. Might need to build an additional fleet, though, if I go to war with both of them at once. So we'll have to do that next episode, and we'll have to do it by basically... Well, I'll tell you what, I can go ahead and queue it up now. Um, it's going to be really expensive, though. Because um, I want to have the same rough distribution of ships. Hang on. Maybe... I'm trying to think. Is there, a tr is there a certain battleship type I just want 15 of? I'm trying to think of how I could distribute 30. Yeah, the Invictus is nice, but... I think I'd rather have 15 of the Julius class and then 5 of each of these for the 30. Julius class is the most basic, and it has the disruptors, which are really, really important to take down shields. So let's go ahead and work on that. Um, first thing we need to do, we need to go ahead and get... Are you guys set as rally points? Yeah, let's first of all turn off your rally points so that a distant, so that new ships don't join you. And then you need to... Yeah, you can be an ABR. And then Classus Ravenus, I just need you to orbit another planet. So go to Balawar Continentum Minor. And then any world that has 
a let's see all right so Baltrus Tropicus has one so let's go ahead and do five all right so that's we need five more Julius class somewhere yep now do we have those anywhere else no we don't all right so that's those. Um, let's go ahead then and queue up. We have plenty of money for this. All right, so it's going to take a second to build these. So we're not going to be we're not necessarily going to go to war right away, but we just need this third fleet in order to feel confident in our chances here. Now, these planets as well have cruiser construction yards. I'll have to keep an eye on that. But there are also a few planets that have destroyer construction yards where I can start working on those. So tell you what, let's go ahead and queue up their destroyer complements, which needs to be 25 each. We need Barnard Continentum, Sirius Continentum, and Centauri Continentum in on this. So roughly 16 per. And then we have two destroyer types. So... All right, so 16 of each, which leaves, um, let's see, that's 30 plus 18, that's, uh, we're getting there, we need, we need to do two more um, in order to do this right. So it just needs to be one Tiberius class and one Justinian class, and we should be good. And then we need to build Corvettes. Where do we have Corvette building yards? Sasha, no, Baltus Continentum we do, and Core Oceanum we do, and Upskyke. All right, so here we need to have basically 10 of each on each planet. And we've got enough resources for this, I think. So hang on, let me make sure I do appropriate music for what we're doing right now. All right, so these, th wait, no, it's these three that have, good. All right, so let's go ahead and do... Yeah, we got more than enough resources. Excellent. All right. All right, so this fleet's going to be building for most of the next episode. I'm going to go ahead and stop this one here. In the next one, we are going to prepare this third fleet. We need to come up with a name for it between episodes, and I need to check on what that Federation status means, because I'm not quite sure if it means that uh, if I declare war on the, on the Tendrakians, will the Polismus Order uh, follow suit? Will they will they join the fight? I'm not concerned about them, because again, these guys are... They're, they're pathetic compared to us. Their fleet power is pathetic. Their naval capacity is pathetic. Um, we just... Uh, we'll, we'll roll over them. Um... They're, they are equivalent to us. Yeah, their fleet power is inferior. So the Tendrakians are actually, they have they have some some ships, but I, I just, I don't think that they are going to be able to stack up against us once our ships actually arrive in their space. So, so yeah, I'm going to stop this one here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.